Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and with me is Jean-Christophe Babin, the CEO of Bulgari. Jean-Christophe, a pleasure to have you. Good afternoon, Alexander, and uh, it's great to see you after quite a long time. Yes, on physically. Geneva. On so, the Nevalic side, so yeah. we have the chance also to be uh, in the capital city of world watchmaking, which is uh, great, obviously, for interesting, uh, incredible news. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. This year is a particular year for Bulgari because 10 years ago they started and they introduced the Octo Finissimo. It's one of my favorite designs, and I was saying all the last decade. Every decade in the watch industry, there's one iconic design born. And I think the last decade was the decade, the Octo Finissimo, and it will stay now. It has become an iconic design, and you have been really pushing, pushing it with one world record after the other, I have to say. It's the eighth now. Yeah. You have been presenting a couple of days. And um, tell me a little bit about this Octo Finissimo. What is in your... In your world, what is the CEO thinking about this iconic watch? Well, first, I mean, I'm very happy that you acknowledge it's an icon because few watches have made it to the iconic status and most, if not all watches but Octo, made it in the 20th century. Uh, and most of them in the 60s and 70s, which have been overly credited. So Octo Finissimo is somehow the first and only icon of the 21st century, which is quite uh, interesting. And it's a different icon from the 20th century uh, in the sense that uh, it has three dimensions. And this is probably explaining why it has been so quick to become an icon. When the icons of the 20th century we all know by art because they are obvious, uh, have mostly one dimension, which is design. So, I mean, if you take each and every single icon, which we all acknowledge from the 20th century, they're an icon primarily because there was a great design, and then over the years it evolved. But uh, Octofissimo, obviously, has started with the design. I mean, the octagonal design, which was inspired by Roman sellings, is pretty unique, very strong. The 110 angles also uh, make it a cutting edge watch. But it has two other dimensions, which I think explain also why, how fast. The second dimension is uh, the look. This monochromatic choice we made with titanium case, bracelet, and dial, which provide it with the look, which together with the shapes, make it immediately recognizable at 10 meters. And all world record, I mean the seven plus one we mentioned, I have in common to have that uh, look uh, made of the octagon plus the monochromatic. And the third dimension, which uh, no icon had before, is, I mean, uh, those world records, that is technology, futuristic technology. And so combining futuristic technology together with monochromatic titanium, together with octagonal shape, has made uh, octo a three-dimensional icon compared to, I would say, uh, mono-dimensional icons from the 20th century. And it is thinness that is a driving yeah. element from the early from the early days. Yeah, the you, you, the, the, the 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 idea was to make a thin, good-looking watch that is really pushing the limits every year. It is incredible. Well, I mean, the, actually, the story is, is beautiful because initially we didn't shoot for world records. What we really wanted, uh, looking at the market and looking at the overall fashion design, interior design environment. We wanted really a hugely elegant and contemporary watch matching uh, with a modern gentleman styling when it comes, for instance, to dressing, the slim fit, rather than minimalist modern design, uh, minimalist contemporary art. And we realized that there were no watches uh, really matching this new lifestyle of the 21st century. Hence the idea to develop an ultra thin watch. Why? Because we want, as a jeweler, to bring to gentlemen through the watch the same elegance we bring to ladies through the jewelry. And uh, moving on, we discovered that we had to invent it because there was nothing on the market which could match, you know, that obsession for styling. And the first Finissimo. And then when we got the first prototype in 2014, we were so close to the thinnest ever that we decided to go the extra mile uh, to get a record, but it was like uh, getting a goodie. <laughs> and it worked. And so there was such a buzz, I remember, after this 2014 introduction, uh, because of the thinness, because of the look, but because also of the record, that obviously when moving on to uh, further develop it as a full collection 
with a uh, minutributor, perpetual calendar, chronograph, tourbillon, tourbillon chronograph, we decided that not only we should obviously capitalize on the shape, on the monochromatic look, but we should capitalize on the technology and make sure, if possible, that each and every single one would beat the record of its competing category. So the sinus chronograph, the sinus minutributor, the sinus tourbillon, and so on. And we made it without any competitor ever challenging us and getting quicker than Bulgari on the market with a senior choreograph, a senior repeater, a senior tourbillon, which has been quite a chance. Uh, so the, the, the only competitor is you uh, pushing your teams, telling them to go. Yeah. So, uh, you, are the, you are the competitor. You know, I'm very competitive, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you for a long time. One decade ago, <laughs> I, I was really obsessively uh, pursuing the, the hundred of a second, the thousand of a second, the five. 10,000 per second, so, know, know. you know, because the former brand had the DNA, which was very much about, you know, the yeah, yeah. Uh, tiniest fractions of time. Obviously, in Bulgari, the tiniest fraction of times are not the name of the game. The name of the game is to contribute to people elegance through jewelry yeah. and through elegant watches. And so, instead of pursuing uh, milliseconds, yeah. I've decided uh, to pursue millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I said it. I know you for a long time, and I know that you're pushing, but, but it's know, good. This is what a brand needs. And, and know, if there is no external competitor, then let's take the CEO to be the competitor. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, internally, you have no idea how uh, raising, I mean, the bar in terms of ambition, uh, eventually people uh, are enthusiastic because it's absolutely uh, irresistible, you know, to be part of an amazing journey. And also because people are forced to think out of the box. Uh, mm. And if I come to Ultra, which is uh, the main hero of uh, our talk today, uh, Ultra was obviously impossible when we started discussing, can we uh, make a new Finissimo? Because it was not about uh, making an eighth Finissimo. It was to make a new one, which would really be a quantum leap in terms of elegance and thinness compared to any existing Finissimo. And they asked me, but what do you mean by a quantum leap? I said, oh, well, if you take the world record, maybe we cut it by 50%. They all look at me like if I were crazy, you know, are you not yourself? I mean, it was already so difficult to get where we are. 50%, no, maybe 10, 15. And I said, look, guys, if we agree on 10%, we're going to get there. But it will be so marginal that it's not worth the effort because the final client won't make any difference. So either we don't do it, which I can agree. I mean, if you don't want to do it, why should we do it? We are not obliged. But if we do it collectively, it has to be immediately recognizable as something which is a new generation. And they told me, but this generation is only seven years old. I said, that's fine, but why not? And then, believe it or not, uh, we made it, not cutting by 50%, but cutting by 70% <laughs> the existing record. Uh, which was beaten last week in Rome when we first unveiled uh, mm. this piece, which 1. is 1.8 millimeter, which is thinner than the coin you have in your hand. I yeah, think. I have it here. I, yeah, I have the two franc coin. I have it. Yeah, and the two franc coin basically is the same as the two euro coin yeah. uh, because yeah. it is compatible and yeah. limit for something. It's two something. Uh, two twenty eight against one eighty for for the watch. So, in that coin, basically, we put one hundred seventy components. <laughs> Just it's to, to, to give an idea it's on amazing. how uh, incredible, as, and that is why I say it's so quantum leap, because yeah. we had uh, not to improve or evolve Finissimo, we had to reinvent the ultra thin movement, and that's why to me it's the eighth, but the first world record. It, it's the eighth indeed, because uh, out of the sequence, but it's the first because this construction has absolutely nothing to see with the previous seven world records. The previous seven were based on three-dimensional movements encased in very slim watches, okay? This is a B-dimensional movement, which is really incredible, which has no case, because basically uh, the, main the plate, case... Main plate is... The main plate is the back, yeah. and then the bezel is covering the main, mm. the main plate. So there's no case. Yeah. And, and I, I learned before, excuse me, I learned before if you take away the glass, it would only be 1.5. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it needs to it needs to be, if not waterproof, but splash proof. Yeah. And obviously, we need obviously a sapphire to protect because yeah. it's so fragile. So uh, only the glass adds. So the, the movement alone is one point five. It's okay. No, no. So <laughs> it's it's just amazing. And uh, the the beauty of it is that uh, 
because of the constraints uh, to make it that thin, uh, we ended up with a design which is, is, is a wonder. Why? Because we were obliged to split the hours from the minutes from the seconds, otherwise piling three hands would make it too thick. So we had no other option to, to, to separate the hands. But we had also, I mean, to rethink how can we adjust time? Because a crown couldn't fit. Because how can you fit a crown on such a case band? Actually, there's no case. So, uh, and same for uh, rewinding the barrel. It's a manual watch. So how could we do that? And the answer was the same for, as the rest of the movement. We have to focus essentially of constructing a movement with wheels all on the same plan. Because if putting wheels together, eventually will be very flat, will be uh, bi-dimensional and not three-dimensional. And we made it. So it's a total revolution. Mm. Uh, however, it has the octagonal shape, mm. it has a monochromatic titanium mm. look, and uh, it has a revolutionary technology. So it fits together with the family, but it's a new generation of Finissimo, not substituting the current, because the current is doing wonderfully, but taking us into a new frontier, which uh, we are starting to explore those days and which probably will pave the way to, uh, yes, probably new records. And now comes the moment. If you have been watching the video about this watch and all the other seven records, if you have not, go and see it. It's amazing. We have been able to show all the seven records, including this one. And in the video, when it comes to explaining the QR code that is here, I said it will be the CEO doing it. And this is the moment now, Jean-Christophe, I'm challenging you. Well, so, so I did the, <laughs> And I want you to explain what's happened. Why did you put a QR code on the watch? Well, many have asked me, why making a mechanical wristwatch so thin so incredible, and why a QR code? What's so there are two reasons. We believe that the future of luxury, especially our luxury, uh, will be even brighter if it's not only a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, which it is, or like a necklace is, but if additionally to be a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, it is also a very strong uh, emotional experience an interactive experience. And obviously when we think about uh, immersive, emotional, interactive, we think immediately about digital. But we don't want, obviously, this watch to be digital. This has to be a masterpiece of mechanics. And so as we had a big barrel, because uh, to make it very thin, you have to increase the diameter because uh, for 60 hours per reserve, the spring is very long. And so if you roll it around a small diameter, you end up with a very thick barrel, so it does work. So we had uh, to have a very big diameter. And then came uh, the question mark, how do we decorate that big piece? And we started initially with the traditional Côte de Genève trial, that it was really ugly. And then uh, thinking about immersive, digital, metaverse, we thought, of course, this is where we should uh, add the gate into the digital world. And then we engraved with the laser a first QR code. And the result was amazingly beautiful because the eye doesn't even understand it's a QR code. Obviously, if you get closer, you find a QR code. And then for us, this has been really a major breakthrough. At the same level, I would say, in terms of thinking out of the box as the construction itself, because this watch is the first and only, not only, I mean, uh, that thin, but also the first and only mechanical watch which connects you to the metaverse, to the digital world, in a very simple way. Uh, you just take your mobile, uh, you just need, I mean, any QR app, because you know they are all uh, on the Apple Store or whatever, and then uh, you scan it. So immediately you end up onto a website which still has to be fine-tuned in terms of uh, aesthetics because uh, this is uh, the, the presentation bar. And then uh, it will uh, hopefully, uh, so it's opening. And so in that web website, it's a mini website, you basically have three dimensions. One is data storage, which is into the blockchain, where you find the ownership certificate, uh, the warranty certificate, the authenticity certificate, the logbook of the maintenance uh, to make sure that you have properly made a noise. So all the information needed, I mean, uh, to maintain the watch, but also to resell the watch as you would do for a Ferrari. You would never buy a second-hand Ferrari if, I mean, the logbook of maintenance is not properly 
uh, filled in and rubber stamp by the dealer because you, you don't trust. I mean, on such a high ticket car, you would never. And I think for high ticket watch, obviously, you need to have all that uh, transparently stored into the blockchain so that the new buyer is confident and the vendor also is pretty confident of what he's selling. Then the second part uh, is made of uh, video assets. Uh, and those assets uh, are uh, evolving, meaning that initially what you're going to discover if you buy it, uh, Fabrizio uh, doing the first sketches of the watch, rather than the watch masters uh, crafting, milling, drilling, the very first micro components of that watch, up to the Roma celebration of the Pantheon. Now, in two months, Bulgari will have its uh, iJury 2022 uh, collection unveiling in Paris. The owner, in preview, when scanning, as I just did it now, will have also, for instance, uh, the preview of the iJury collection. Better, as each QR code is specific to each watch, so to each owner, if you are the owner, and I know that you are passionate about vintage cars, and you are, uh, you will discover uh, by end of August a preview on Passione and Gadina. Because, because I know you, you lack vintage cars, so I can also, I mean, make sure that your QR code will be associated with the bespoke content for Alexander Linz, <laughs> uh, which is totally unique. And, and you know that I uh, drove the Engadina already. And that's why I was and mentioning I, it. And I finished among the first ones, and I was uh, rewarded one of your watches, so I really have a unique... <laughs> no, no, I, and that's why, you know, uh, I, I, I was mentioning Engadina because I, I know you, and, and this is, you know, the, the, the third element, uh, which is one of the most creative in that watch, mm -hmm. is that... High end watches are usually purchased by people who are quite wealthy by definition. This watch costs 440,000 euros, so it's some money. And we know that those clients usually have a passion for contemporary arts. And contemporary arts today is evolving very quickly towards digital contemporary art with the NFTs. The NFTs are making art not only steel and classical, but uh, digital. So usually, you know, our watches are inspired by art. Here, the art is inspired by the watch. So basically, uh, the creativity has been inspired by the watch. And each of these NFTs has two uh, properties. The first one, uh, they are unique to each owner. Uh, so basically, there is one element which is common to all, which is this element. So the shape uh, or the symbol of the watch is common to all because eventually it's celebrating that watch. All the rest we've seen is uh, slightly different and uh, is uh, created by our intelligence artificial. Uh, so basically we have the main NFT, which is a kind of matrix. And in that matrix, we have the mandatory part, which is the shape of the watch. And everything else can be modified by uh, artificial intelligence. Okay. And for instance, uh, we have seen a motion NFT. But if you like, for instance, uh, this visual, mm as a beautiful piece of modern art, you can have on your screen, in your beautiful living room, that visual for six hours, six days, six months, six years, whatever. You're not forced to have a motion NFT. You can have a steel, like in contemporary art, a painting is a steel painting. So you can have it all the same, with the same quality, yeah, you know, incredible. as painting. So it's not only one NFT, it's what if you have the motion, it can be slower or faster, but it can be 100 because there are more than one image per second. And you can stop on each image and make it, I mean, your art of today, of tomorrow, or the after tomorrow. And so this is unique because for the first time you have art embedded in the art of the watch, uh, specific and unique to the watch, uh, unique for each owner, and stored into the blockchain alongside with all the other information so that when you transfer the property of the watch, you transfer also your NFT. So uh, you have to sing twice before selling a watch. Because, because <laughs> yeah, you whatever to, you think. No, because you have to give up the ownership yeah, yeah. Of, of your yeah. And I can tell you that these NFTs will get a lot of value because mm -hmm. they are among the very first art NFT credit. For luxury uh, or art luxury, they are not the, the first one. This is the first ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's unique to each owner. It's beautiful, and it's not a replica of the watch like several AFT. It's an elaboration inspired by the watch. And so that's the first time that we blend, really, uh, the beauty of the craftsmanship of a mechanical watch together with the immersion, the emotion of contemporary art. And this is where I think we take watchmaking 
to a new step, which is immersive, which is emotional, beyond the fact that this is done through digital without any kind of uh, digital or electrical interference to the watch. What is next? Well, eight, that's the eighth world record. 1.8 millimeter fin. What can you do next? Well, next, you know, uh, obviously we don't uh, uh, like the idea uh, to copy and we will never copy anything, but uh, we could imagine that as it's so thin, if I add five uh, millimeter more from 1.8, mm -hmm. I'm at 2.3, like the two euro coin. So accepting to go to that thickness, mm -hmm. I could have a complication, mm -hmm. of course. So this watch is not only a watch, it's a platform. Mm -hmm. Exactly as the so first. So base movement for adding complications. Like the first Finissimo. Okay, so you restart. We you, could, we yeah. could restart the yeah. same string of world records, uh, another six or seven, <laughs> just because we're restarting. And that's why I wanted it 50% smaller because it was not just, yeah. I mean. We added some security for and, adding, and <laughs> adding. And, and we're 70% thinner. Yeah. I have even more space and more room wow. for creativity yeah. to elaborate on that first generation, yeah. to elaborate further complication, which obviously will add some thickness, but I'm so far from the previous ones that I mean, uh, I have a kind of highway of creativity, uh, and it's up to Fabrizio now, to our master watchmakers, to Philippe, our genius in the development department, to really come back to Antoine, mm -hmm. uh, to myself, uh, to uh, propose us what they would do next on it. But obviously, when you have only 1.8 millimeter, you immediately have some ideas on mm. what you could add uh, year after year, layer after layer, uh, to continue to build the Octo Finissimo legend. And still no competitor. Well, I mean, I mean there <laughs> No, he, he is the competitor. There are other brands, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, I know, but they are, not, they are not there where you are. Well, With all the variety you have been doing from A to Z, uh, the other brand you're talking about is, is not there. They have no, introduced one watch. They have a different philosophy. Yeah, For okay. us, you know, Finissimo is the main Bulgari uh, men's watch. Yeah. For them, it is one of their several men's collections. Yes. So obviously, uh, the approach is different. So for us, obviously, uh, to create a big business, we need a, a breadth and depth of assortment, allowing clients uh, at different price points, at different levels of watchmaking passion to find, I mean, they're finissimo. Uh, if, com by comparison, uh, mentioning the other brand, you have several different men's watch collection, then obviously on the ultra thin one, you don't necessarily need, need to have such variety. No. Uh, so uh, I respect very much what they do, it's remarkable, uh, but obviously our approach is very different. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. So I you know now, if you have been watching the other video where I said the CEO will introduce you, the use of that QR code, why I let him do it, because I couldn't have done it. <laughs> and, the the and the beauty, just to conclude, this yeah. QR code obviously uh, is with this Finnish Ultra, but tomorrow I can have it, I mean, on the Bulgari Aluminium. Uh, yeah, on yeah, the no, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, it's a start. I, yeah. I can have yeah. it on the back of my Seduto Ladies watch, because yeah. you know, it's something, you know where we started with it? Mm -hmm. With the fragrances, we put it on the outer packaging of fragrances because in many stores, uh, we can't have a beauty advisor. And so the client has absolutely no narrative about the fragrance they are interested in. Mm -hmm. So by scanning the packaging of our uh, Rose Goldea Blossom Delight, for instance, rather than Man Glacial Essence, by scanning it, you immediately access to mini site and you have all the narratives that the beauty advisor would share with you. So and it will be correct information because you never know if that beauty Our training is perfect because with yeah. the mini site and the QR, I mean, you cannot deviate from uh, the kind of official narrative. And, 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 and in and, the future... We, and so the idea came yeah. from the fragrance and because uh, as we are a fragrance producer, it came really for the fragrance saying, yes, of course, the product should have a built-in narrative vehicle, mm. which is a QR code. The point is how to make it elegant uh, and stylish in luxury, because obviously a QR code yeah, can yeah. be ugly. And yeah. this laser engraved QR code is aesthetically, to my uh, feeling, fitting very well with the overall aesthetic of the watch, which that, was really a challenge. Uh, I'm going a little bit forward, so if the 20th world record comes, you will be able also to smell the perfume. 
we could, I mean, we, we no, could I'm fuse, we could fuse, I mean, all our many, our many fields of expertise, oh, but, uh, but so yeah. Christophe, I have to say thank you. Well, it's, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, amazing. Uh, thank you really for taking time. I know you were very busy today and you made it for the interview. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so you know, it's my passion first. It's my duty. Yeah, uh, you are, you are, that's so, such, you are such a passionate guy and uh, this is what the industry needs end of the day. And you, I mean, and your blog are really a, really a true reference, a true benchmark in watchmaking. Really, I, I mean it really. Uh, you have established new standards, uh, you are so knowledgeable about watches that obviously sharing it with you, uh, watching your enthusiastic eyes, uh, for me are uh, an incredible recognition of the work that the whole team uh, has developed. I, I, Under I, the leadership, and for me it's very important, of Antoine is not here today because unfortunately he has got the COVID. Oh. Uh, but Fabrizio Bonamassa, the chief designer, Philippe Starlatsky is the uh, developer. Because it's really, first and foremost, a collective achievement uh, of a company which 20 years ago uh, was not even considered as a serious watchmaker and which today has been the most innovative in the watch industry over the last 10 years. And so uh, it's a beautiful collective team achievement. Yeah, of course. And I have fun supporting that because I really liked the watch. When I saw it the first time, I said, this will be an iconic design. It became an iconic and design. And how did you react when, uh, from what you've seen in photography, mm -hmm. you you really got it in your hands. Uh, the fo any photo would show the real piece. No, it, 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 you can't compare. Mm -hmm. You have to have it in your hands, you have to have it on your wrist. And I hope we were able in the video to show you at least a little bit how this watch looks like in real. But uh, the pictures are not, uh, yeah, they're not. Uh, it's very difficult no, yeah, to, to imagine. The lightness, what it means. It's, it's almost a, a sheet of paper. <laughs> and it's still showing the time. And you're still having everything you want, even a small second indication. It's Which is a coquetry, yeah. as we say in French. Ah, but you, <laughs> if you look closely, you see the seconds. Yeah, of course. Involving, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's nice. Every, and everything it's, is it's, there. And you know, it's part yeah. of the emotion. And yes. It's, it, I mean, many brands wouldn't have even considered it. No. But we felt that it's it was. It's linked to the fourth wheel directly. Exactly. Information is taken. It turns once per minute. Exactly. And it, it, it's it, what you need. Exactly. It's what we need. Great. Ah, thank you so. Thank you very much for Alexander, coming, being on our little um, yeah, interview here. I'm yeah. excited. Um, yeah, once again, please, if you have not watched the video where I present you all the world records, go watch it. It's stunningly beautiful. We have also taped the new um, watches that came out this year for to the, celebrate the, the 10th video, anniversary, yeah. where you have some sketches of uh, Fabrizio Bonamassa on it as he, when he designed the watches, imagined the die to look like. We have a video. We have Jean-Christophe who explained us everything. And uh, the last thing I will ask you, uh, may we then film you with the watch on the wrist? Be of, our of, wrist shot of model. Of course. <laughs> proudly, proudly and happily doing it with you uh, because really it's great to, to partner with you, Alexander. Thank you really? very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching a video again on Watch Advisor. You know where those special stories come. It's here. Stay tuned. Discover all the other things we do here in Geneva. And see you back soon on our channel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Watch Advisor. Bye-bye.